Foot Clan, we have a great show for you today. It was a waiver episode. So many names. You got bye weeks for big time teams, and you need some answers at the running back and wide receiver positions. We've got those for you and some news, a big trade. Enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Ah, uh, yeah. You feel better? Goes down smooth. <laughs> That's how you start a day. Oh, wow. Yeah. I guess if you build that into your routine, it can be disruptive to take it away. Huh? Sorry about that, Mike. You're forgiven. Tuesday, October 25th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason back with you. Waiver day, trade day. We have uh, an NFL trade to talk about. Quarterback streamers, a Monday night game to recap. Recap, cap, cap. That was a delightful game. Yeah, I, I I could see why you enjoyed it in particular, Mike. You have been a Justin Fields stan. Yes, I, I'm a Fields stan. I am a I was a Mac Jones is fine, but like last year was oh Mac Jones, look how good he is when he was of the quarterbacks dropped into by far the best <clears throat> situation compared to the other guys. So he looked better than them, but it was like Mac Jones is fine. I just we we need to. Pumped the brakes. I didn't think he was fantastic. And then Fields was used appropriately, rolling him out, make, making easy throws. He ran, what did he run, 12 times? 13. 13 carries for Justin Fields. That's what needs to happen. I'll, I'll take 14. Is it 14? <laughs> yes. Okay. What? It was 14. He, he was yeah. the leading Let's uh, go. attempts on the team. And, um, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll just get into that. 33 yes. to 14. Sh shout out to the Bears. Yeah, yeah. Uh, enjoyed watching Peyton Manning say, you know, get mad at taking the knee on the goal line. <laughs> that was fantastic. He basically said, if you can put forty up in Foxborough, you put forty up in Foxborough. <laughs> but they, um, you know, I'll be honest. When this game got to, I think it was like seventeen fourteen, and New England had scored two quick uh, times on the back of Bailey Zappi before things went south. I just figured New England would run away with it at right. that point. It, it, it was trending, the momentum on the road. So a lot of credit to Justin Fields and company. Uh, he ran the ball well, 5.9 a carry, 82 yards. They designed runs for him, uh, which is good because every design run is not uh, a pass <laughs> by Justin Fields, yeah. where, where he does struggle right now. He did throw the ball 21 times, which is, you know, Marcus Mariota's dreaming of uh, right. throwing the ball 21 times. He he had a really good game overall. Uh, it was very difficult to stop the Bears' offense from moving the ball. At best, they could stop him for a field goal. But when it came to just you get three downs to stop this team, there was almost always at least one play where Justin Fields scrambled and beat a defender. And it was I I would have been so frustrated as a defense. Like ah, we were we were right there, and he slipped through our gasp grasp. Mm -hmm frustrated was for sure Mac Jones like he comes out he I mean Mac Jones looking bad to start the game they make the immediate move to go back to Zappy yeah he threw that and, ugly pick and there are <laughs> he starts the the the, the game Zappy does with two just free plays where it was Ramondre Stevenson on the wheel wide open and Mac Jones I'm sure is just like are you freaking kidding me? And then Jacoby Myers on a broken defensive play that Zappy almost blew it took like a, an outrageous catch by Jacoby to go get it. Then he gets up and rolls and, and scores. It's like, well, look how good Zappy is. Like, no, he got two free plays, and he almost screwed it up. And it came crashing down. Yes. Two interceptions later in the game. Oh, it was great. Now you've got just Bill Belichick looking uh, just as bad <laughs> as you can in a press conference. A couple quick questions fantasy-wise. One, Ramondre got all the work. You don't know if that was simply because Damian Harris was coming off the injury. I, I think you'd suspect an 11-3 to 3 carry count to indicate that. 
The other one, the question for you is Darnell Mooney. Has he entered the should be rostered in the midst of bye weeks, could be flexed category where he's been much more involved? I mean, it hasn't been spectacular by any means. Yeah, he, you know, I mean, it's always a matter of what your other options are. I'm not excited for Darnell Mooney. He's great. He looks – I mean, his catch along the sidelines, getting the feet in, he is outstanding. But Garrett even, Wilson or Darnell Mooney, who would you rather start rest of the season? Mm, uh, Garrett Wilson is interesting because of the the injury and what that does to the dynamic of, of the Jets, but I lean Mooney. Unfortunately, he plays Dallas this week, but Miami, Detroit, Atlanta – yeah, right after that. So if you're like if you're picking up between the two of those guys on the waiver wire, I might go Mooney. Yeah, you, I, would, I would lean Wilson, but I think it's a good comp because both of these teams right now aren't throwing the ball much. But I do think that the Jets are going to have to throw the ball more when they don't get to just have sixty yard rushing touchdowns from Brees Hall anymore. What about the number one Darnell Mooney versus the number three Tyler Boyd? <laughs> I would definitely take Tyler Boyd. Uh, the way that the Bengals are throwing the ball versus expectation they're just passing it now they're they're in shotgun and saying burrow have at it and that's what we want and so i would much rather have a piece of that Bengals passing offense yeah but what do you do about now the chicago running backs we we said or not we said we were told coming into this weekend by the coaching staff we're gonna go hot hand and it seemed like well that was just lip service at the time because herbert had the big carry uh last week and Montgomery was still being heavily featured. Like, he was bell cow usage. But this week, 15 carries for Montgomery turned into 62 yards. He got the touchdown. But Khalil Herbert got 12 carries that turned into 62 yards. So this, now, it's only one game, but it is the one game immediately after they said hot hand. So are you concerned for Montgomery that this will go to a much tighter committee where it, I think Montgomery is the leader of the committee, but it, what does it look like for the total of the game? It seems like he's going to lose some touches. Uh, he, you know, it, for a player who has spent so much of the last few years getting 20-plus opportunities a game, I think he's probably more 15, 16 opportunity guy, but he's a good running back. And I yes. think I would still start David Montgomery. I would not necessarily start Khalil Herbert. So it's pretty much status quo just with lower expectations this week. Zeke Pollard situation? Uh, I I would I would not call it Zeke Pollard yet. I I haven't seen you know uh, enough of a sample size to say that Khalil will be as involved as Pollard has been for a while. Obviously, a one game sample he was. Um, but this week they play against the Dallas Cowboys. They might have the best tough, run yeah. defense in the league. So went from seventy eight percent of snaps to fifty six percent of snaps. David Montgomery, something to monitor. Obviously, if their offense plays like this, they will have scoring chances that they. Both guys didn't have before. A couple reminders here at the top before we get into things. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The giveaway, our Foot Clan giveaway, which you can find uh, at FootClanGiveaway.com. Six days left. A signed Jalen Waddle, signed Jalen Hurts, signed DJ Moore jersey available. And we're giving away a virtual studio tour, a one on one with somebody on Zoom. And, uh, you know, Brooks might be there. Brooks, do we get to see the, the garage? With uh, with uh, the ten Lambos. No, no, you get to see okay. Deucer's Alley. Does he have like a uh, J? Uh, what is it? Jay Leno style garage? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Jay actually, Leno wishes. Jay Leno rents space in Brooks's garage. Oh, that that was Brooks's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because he's very wealthy. Brooks is very, very, very wealthy. Uh, all right, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. I had asked Kyle the first half carry count between Monty and Herbert. Just 7-2. to two. I was just curious because the end yeah. of that game was a little garbagey. And I know Ebner got the last three carries, but I wasn't... Sometimes that can distort things. You know, they, they sure. haven't been up 33-14 to 14 in very many games. So... I think Jason's point about giving it another week to see what happens might be valuable. We have a big trade. We have a trade. We have a great trade. We have, wow, a great trade? This is phenomenal. Okay, okay, for, so, for one side and not for the other? Correct. Okay. James Robinson was traded by Jacksonville to the Jets to replace Brees Hall 
Uh, the Jets are winning with the running game and the defense. They obviously needed another piece. Michael Carter wasn't going to be it. And uh, so a six-round pick that can become a fifth. James Robinson had no touches last week. So probably good for both sides if Travis Etienne sure. is the plan, which he is. Jason, why... What's your thoughts on this trade? What are your what? Why are you expressing it as I, I you did? I love uh, the talent of Travis Etienne. Uh, he was one of those players I targeted a lot in drafts because of his explosive nature. And then to start the season, it seemed like an L. You know, you had James Robinson scoring touchdowns yeah. all over the place, getting the uh, first down usage. But as the season went on, and everybody could tell, like you have an explosive running back. And you've got a, a guy chugging along that, yeah, he got a couple touchdowns, which, which was good for fantasy, but you're hurting your offense every time you gave the ball to James Robinson over Travis Etienne. And lo and behold, this last week, they're like, okay, yeah, yeah they don't give the ball to James Robinson. James Robinson only plays 17% of snaps. Travis Etienne becomes their kind of bell cow back. And you just hope and you pray. You're like, man, is this like a thing? Is this the new normal? Because it should be. And the confirmation of saying, hey, James, thank you for your service. We would rather have a pick next year because we're not going to be involving you. That says to me, they want Travis Etienne to be a bell cow running back. Um, now, as Andy has pointed out many times, Travis Etienne, maybe not built to be a bell cow running back. So, uh, you know, in the waiver show, we'll, we'll talk about some new insurance options that have cropped up after this uh, trade. But I love the trade from the standpoint of what it does for Travis Etienne. Obviously, it's I think it's very, very hurtful to Michael Carter. Well, the, a couple things that have been interesting. One, James Robinson is still 4.2 a carry on this season. The last time we saw him out there the week before, he had a pretty good game yeah. on the ground. Uh, what's interesting about ETN is that he is doing it on the ground. Like It's not the passing game. I mean, his receptions, one last week, two the week before. Um, he's just doing it on the ground. 14 opportunities last week or attempts. Uh, James Robinson, he, he won't die. Like, you take his Achilles, he'll come back. You take his uh, starting jump, he'll go to a team that, that could use a uh, between-the-tackles, tough runner. James Robinson, I still think, is going to be fantasy relevant in, in New York. Well, this is the most draft capital ever spent on James <laughs> Robinson. That's, yeah. that's accurate, yeah. I mean, I, do I think Michael Carter will be involved? Yeah, I think he'll be involved quite a bit in the passing game. I don't think James Robinson's going to do what Brees was doing in the passing game, but between the tackles, total attempts per week. I mean, we don't have to talk about Ty Johnson today. If you have James Robinson, though, right now, are you riding it out, seeing what the value is, or are you trading on the hope? I don't think there's a lot of excitement. I don't think there's a lot of, like, buzz. You're not, you're like, well, you know, you're not going to get somebody going after him saying, I really want James Robinson on the Jets. Right, I, I agree with that. I don't think you can capitalize. If I could, I would. Okay. I don't expect James Robinson to be fantasy valuable for the Jets. That's my expectation. I would still much rather have Michael Carter there um, than James Robinson. I think he'll be like Brian Robinson. Which which one? You're, you're saying that... Uh, you, Commanders? Yeah. No, not with <laughs> Brian Robinson. I'm saying which of the Jets Sorry, players are Sorry, I just are think you? James Robinson will kind of be Brian Robinson. He'll get the first and second down work. They're going to run the ball a ton, right? We know the total opportunities. Last week, Brian Robinson had like 20 carries. But you still see Gibson come in and get utilized. McKissick come in and get utilized. That's just my expectation. I think James Robinson was picked up for a reason. I don't know if that... Yeah. Thank not, you. not necessary. <laughs> Take a walk. Take a walk. No, I mean, if Brian Robinson scores, he's super valuable on a week. If James Robinson scores, I think he'll be super valuable. Yeah, I, I guess you, you I, think he's irrelevant. I don't think he's irrelevant uh, he, because he will have scoring opportunities, and when he scores, you know that's fantasy relevant. But I, I don't think he'll come in and have 16 carries a game the way that that's what I presume for Brian Robinson. I think this will be much more of a 50-50 split, or, or if it's a 60-40 split, I I think that'll be in the favor of Michael Carter, okay, not uh, Brian Robinson. Uh, or, previous uh, certainly not Brian Robinson yes. either. Previous three weeks, uh, Brees was around 20. To 23 carries to get distributed among those two guys. He's so good. Yeah, I thought it was a little interesting of the the trade happened very quickly and earlier in that day there were, you know, 
some some whispers from the bushes were starting to build that perhaps the Cleveland Browns are willing to trade Kareem Hunt. Because, yeah, because he is he's on an expiring contract. They're not utilizing him at least the last couple games. They're just they're barely using him. And if the pricing were the same as far as you, know, we got to send a six that turns into a fifth. If you could have gotten Kareem Hunt, I that's where I would have gone. But I we have oh, no that idea what the Browns are asking. That would have been pretty wild. Yeah, I can't. That's as close as replacing Brees Hall as you could get. Yeah, that would have been great. But I I can't imagine he would cost only a six that turns into a fifth. So the the price is higher. But we're we're uh, I mean you know we're almost to the waiver section. We're going to talk about uh the backfield in Cleveland too because the trade deadline is approaching. Yeah, Travis Etienne or Miles Sanders rest of the season. Ooh. Travis Etienne. Um, that's where I lean as well. Man, I I, I want explosive. I, I think Travis Etienne. Miles Sanders has been explosive. He's not Travis Etienne explosive, but I mean he's what's yeah. His no, I, I'm not. He's at no no disrespect to Miles Sanders. So Miles Sanders is currently sitting at four point six yards per carry on the season. Four rushing. What do we got? Yeah, four rushing touchdowns. Do you lean the Miles way? I yeah, I think so. Just taking the offense. Uh, yeah. Very, very close. Travis though. Etienne or Najee Harris rest of the season? Travis, Travis Etienne. Etienne. Okay. I mean, I, I, I view Travis Etienne as a top 10 back. He is uh, more DeAndre Swift than anybody else. I mean, DeAndre Swift generally doesn't get 20 opportunities on the ground, but he gets 10 to 15, and then there's a chance for a home run on every play. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, this is kind of that same Brees Hall style of athlete where you can have that breakaway play. Three weeks ago, had a 30-yard run. Two weeks ago, a 48-yard run. Last week, a 49-yard run. There are times where if you just get him enough space, yep. he gone. Corey Davis, day-to-day -day with a sprained MCL. Team confirmed Elijah Moore will play in week eight, but well, won't catch any well, passes. Well, well, <laughs> uh, co This was a big one. The Colts yep. yesterday decided that they had had enough of the quarterback leading the league in interceptions, fumbles, and sacks. Matt Ryan put on ice, dealing with a shoulder sprain, but will not play uh, as the starting quarterback again this season. Nick Foles has been moved to the number two. Sam Ellinger. Here Is that we how go. how you pronounce it? That's correct. I nailed it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Look, sounded good. Uh, will be the starter. Six-round pick in 2021. He has never attempted a regular season pass. I looked last year. Three carries for Mr. Ellinger. He's looked real good in preseason play. Uh, well, look, I mean, <laughs> Matt Ryan – was safe in some respects, safe for fantasy players in that he was going to mostly hyper-target Michael Pittman on games that he could. Uh, but it was like putting a governor on your offense. Couldn't get out of the pocket. Um, downfield shots were limited. Dumping off the Paris Campbell 10 times was enough to get him benched. Yeah, I, I think that the governor on the offense is going to be Sam Ellinger. Um, <laughs> the same way that there was a governor on the Jets offense when it was Joe Flacco. But they just kept letting Joe Flacco throw the ball 50 times a game because, you know, he's a veteran and that's probably the safest way to protect him is snap the ball, get it out, and a lot of passing attempts. I, I, I fear we're going to have the possibility to see here for the Indianapolis Colts what we saw with the Jets which hey the Jets been winning it has been working and they and the Colts have Jonathan Taylor you know healthy to play that Brees Hall role where maybe this is good for the Colts no doubt I mean if you lead the league in interceptions and fumbles you're going to lose games so Sam Ellinger coming in makes sense but from a reception and receiver standpoint I've got fears and maybe this is just because I've got Michael Pittman in legal record and I'm terrified but I'm, I, I'm I I think kidding. that Sam Ellinger... But Pittman's been bad. I mean, Pittman has basically... The last four weeks, 63rd, 40th, had the big week at six, back to 49. Yeah, I don't I don't think that it's worse. I don't know if it can be worse. I'm looking at their total points scored. 20, 0, 20, 17, 12. If you go fr from throwing the ball 50 times to throwing the ball 24 times, sure, it will be worse. Sure, that 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 would be a problem. Garrett Wilson and the and company and okay, you know that it's like Garrett Wilson is still super talented, but if you don't throw the ball enough, you know it's a Drake London situation. I just That's fear fair. because Sam Ellinger is a mobile quarterback. He he yeah, he, he had... can get out and scramble. He can run the ball, and for fantasy purposes, he might be in consideration here to to you know. 
take a peek at, certainly in, in Superflex leagues. It, as a four-year player at Texas, he had over 1,900 rushing yards. I'm just really over curious. Attempts a, I'm a curious season. to see what happens. We don't know his tendencies when it comes to passing the ball to the running back, right? He doesn't have professional numbers to look at. You know, is Jonathan Taylor, who just said his, his uh, season high in receptions, does he get those looks? Or is he scrambling instead of dropping the ball off? Like, Matt Ryan was never going to scramble. But you get, you get the at least the upside of scrambling. And not I'm not saying an actual run. I'm saying moving around the pocket, roll out, and with his homies, of course. But Sam <laughs> Ellinger, like, maybe he goes deep because Michael Pittman has essentially zero deep targets on the season. And that's that is what's killing him, where – no touchdowns and no big plays. Just so, devil PPR. you don't know, Sam I would, Ellinger. I would take it. Um, I just want some drive sustained. These interceptions, sacks, and fumbles were a problem. Mike Williams will miss weeks, not days. High yeah. ankle sprain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. I mean, we... Yeah, this hurts on a personal level. Uh, but, uh, I mean, this was the expectation. We saw the video. It was a nasty high ankle sprain. So you're going to be talking about a month, probably at least. How do you feel, Andy, how do you feel about Herbert moving forward? You should get Keenan Allen back after the bye week, but if you don't have you don't have uh, Mike Williams here, you have other receivers who have been knocked out. Yeah, it's it's a little concerning, but it is compensated by 50-plus pass attempts. He leads the league in pass attempts, and they just lost J.C. Jackson for the year. Right. Mm -hmm. They keep having these defensive injuries. Their defense has already been a disappointment. So I'm I'm trying to look at that situation and say, look, I think if Keenan's back, you have Austin Eckler. Palmer should be back by the Palmer time. Palmer should be back. So by. you know, there have been games where Mike Williams isn't even involved and he's been fine. So I'm I'm hopeful that the the need to kind of have that fantasy recipe of bad defense keep scoring, bad defense keep scoring. I hope that puts Herbert into, um, you know, somebody you want to start to close the year. I don't know it to be true, but I expect it. Keenan is more important to this offense than Mike Williams is. I mean, when we had Austin Eckler on the show in the beginning of the year, we were talking about these two guys. He's like, there was no doubt to him who is more important to the offense, who you would draft first in fantasy was Keenan. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of, is he healthy? Because Keenan didn't look. No, perfectly he, healthy this no, last he just week looked, looked like he was going through the motions yeah so hopefully coming out of next week's bye he's regular old Keenan if he is I I don't have too many worries about Herbert they should uh they should get another wide out to be honest I think that team needs it maybe uh Chase Claypool <laughs> you need yeah or a deep threat somebody to go run like Jalen Guyton did Debo hamstring injury day to day they uh -oh. have a they have a bye week in week nine uh oh. So you could very easily see Debo sit this week. Maybe they play. It's a divisional game. I think it's the Rams. It, yeah, it'll be tough for them to sit him. Dennis Allen has not named a starting quarterback. <laughs> he doesn't like to do that until later. <laughs> it's Jameis Winston. Oh, but no, look. Credit to Dennis Allen last week against the Arizona Cardinals, withholding that information. Oh boy. Of who is going to be the starter. The Cardinals' defense was bamboozled. Mm. They had no idea how to defend. Who Who is it going to be? It's Danny right. Dalton. They didn't know what to do. Right. They didn't know what to do. So Advantage, Saints. Yeah, so Dennis Allen, keep on doing that. It works really well. Allen Lazard left shoulder in a sling on Monday. This news I don't like. I, <laughs> I did some research this morning because I feel like this team needs Christian Watson so bad. Yes, they do. And he is not available <laughs> he's still out with his hamstring injury wasn't around on the latest report that i saw so so are you going to be bamboozled into playing romeo drops again i you know he is the, uh, romeo it's, duds it's look we tantalizing we, this wide receiver waiver wire pickup that we're about to get to is important to me <laughs> um and i'm gonna need your guys's advice so, okay all right. all right we're gonna put everyone to the test of romeo dobbs michael gallup or 
waiver wire. Okay. And you, I mean, it was nice to see last <laughs> night you had made that big mistake and didn't put Damian Harris in. Yeah, I could have had 1.8 more fantasy points on my team if I played him over either of those wide receivers. Well, this sucks. David and Joku, two to six weeks with a high ankle sprain. Browns are on bye in week nine. You don't have your tight end for a while. Make other arrangements and do it today on the tight end waiver section. Yeah, and unfortunately, I, I think... Kyle the, Pitts, maybe. The, <laughs> <laughs> the injury is severe enough where if you don't have an IR... It's really hard to think about holding David Njoku through the through this injury, but he was so good. So when he said it was no big deal to be in crutches in a boot. <laughs> yes, thank you. That's what, he, that, yes. that was the point we were making on the show. Hey, did he get amputated? I don't think so. He's yeah. okay. Yeah. That should be the line. Right. It's not getting I'm not, amputated. I'm not losing it. I'm not losing this leg. I'll be back. Yeah, good point there, Al. I'm fine. The crutches should have been a real hint. Like uh, Sherlock Holmes could have figured that one out. Yeah. I can't currently use my leg. <laughs> but it's no big a, deal. No big deal. Uh, didn't you say the flesh rune joke <laughs> yeah. yesterday? Uh, the Rams designated Van Jefferson to return from IR. Uh, it's good for the Rams. Yeah, it is. It's it's good for Stafford and, and kind of sustaining drives. I'm not sure I'm in on Van Jefferson. I, I think Van Jefferson can be relevant. You've seen uh, uh, Ben Skronik, uh who's... I don't know, been more fantasy relevant than Allen Robinson, sure. uh, at least between the 20s. That being said, Van Jefferson is just now coming back from a knee surgery. You're not going to have like a week one explosive game. So if you're looking for someone to pick up and play, it's not him. Yeah, he he's definitely, uh, before OBJ showed up last year, he was a dart throw. You get the big week, then you disappear and you get a big week. That was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break and back with the waivers. See if we can help Jason out. Oh, yeah. Let's go. I need this so bad. So we only got a couple bye weeks this week or a couple teams on bye, but they're big. Chiefs, Chargers. Why are we doing this? Look, Mike, as the schedule works out the way it does. I mean, they, they don't get to choose everything perfectly. I, but, but they are going to put six teams on by next week. That's what I'm <laughs> referring to. What are we doing here? All right. Moving forward. Welcome to The Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. Going into the fold, that's what we're doing. Yes, waiver time. Let's see what wide receivers we're welcoming into the fold because there's a laundry list of options, all of which should help Jason. Uh, all of which are rostered in our league. <laughs> You've looked. Uh uh. I see a guy so, who says 0% approximately rostered. So I, I guess at the top of my list, because he's a rookie, he's talented, he's getting targets. Top of my list. It's Wandale. 100%. Because he's rostered in under 50% of leagues. And so the headline here, Wandale Robinson, 6-1 and one, uh, or 5-1 and one Giants. Eight targets last week, six for 50. You know, that's fine. But if you're in a half point or a full point, you're going to be happy with Wandale's involvement in the offense. And he's somebody you can actually target this week that is available in a lot of – oh, it is 6-1. and one. Yeah. He was. I can't find myself to giants. believe it. Yeah. He was involved uh, even more early in the game. It looked like they were planning for him. Now they lose Daniel Bellinger, who you know is not a, a core asset yeah, for the passing game. Ocular break or something? Yeah, it wasn't. No, that's it wasn't an good. eye poke that you do not want. No, that was like an uh, you know an eye rake that was yeah. not good. He's he's out indefinitely. Um but yeah, Wandale, his opportunity is there. He looks great. Like, uh, you know, his short burst speed, um, you know, if they can, it's hard to really trust the Giants receiver, but he's the guy that I would want to pick up ahead of anyone else on this list. If Pickens was out there in your league, which is about 30% of leagues, would he be above Wandale for you? Because he would be for me. It's very close. Um, I, I think I lean Wandale of... You said the involvement that like I, we talked about picking him up last week, but you couldn't really confidently play him because you didn't know for sure that the snaps were going to go up because 23 percent a couple weeks ago. But 69 percent of the routes he ran or snaps ran the second most routes on the team. He is their slot wide receiver. He is their best wide receiver. I don't 
blame when you, Jason when you're saying it's hard to trust a New York Giants wide receiver. That's because they're rolling out budget wide receivers, and Wandale has the chance to be very good, in my opinion. So I, I think that his role just continues to grow. With Bellinger out, their their rookie tight end, he was getting a decent amount of work, and those targets have to go somewhere as well. Pickens was a – he's been a top 24 wide out in three of the last four weeks. Pickens – That's compelling. – feels hard to trust just because you've got Deontay Johnson, who's going to be the number one target leader on the majority of weeks. Uh, Pat Fryermuth around the goal line – has obviously been targeted as well. And then you have Chase Claypool, who had his big game uh, you know, a couple weeks ago. Pickens is great. Pickens is better than Wandale Robinson. 120 target pace over the last four yeah. weeks. 89 reception pace over the last four weeks. Keep, t keep talking. <laughs> keep talking. You're, you, uh, He's you a threat to score on any play, which Wandale is it's, it's tr more troubling. Sure, sure, that's true. But Pickens Oof. is not available in as many leagues. I do think he is more of a alpha potential for your fantasy team but when i was doing my research this morning um about christian watson seeing if he was available for uh playing for the green bay packers i did not realize the amount you, you know the uh jalen rager over justin jefferson debacle that has yes. you know is uh, encapsulated those two franchises yes. yes debacle for sure this was a christian watson over george pickens i yeah. mean the, the people are the people are upset because Aaron, Rod Aaron Rodgers could really use George Pickens. Even when they finally go wide receiver, they don't go the right one. Um, all right, and Garrett Wilson's available in 30% of leagues, too, as an option. But let's look at some lower. Uh, yeah, uh, real quick on uh, on Wandale as well. His schedule is mighty nice. You have Seattle this week, bye week, Houston, Detroit, Dallas, but the Manders twice then in the following three weeks. Like His, his schedule is pretty nice. Oh, he's, a, he's a great pickup. No question. Um, let's look at some other names. Zay Jones. Always. Uh, I think he is a, a flex worthy player every week. Every week. Yeah. He's just, he's just, if you need to smash 10 targets glass, again in case of emergency, I don't look there. at starting him very much different than Christian Kirk. I mean, Christian Kirk's a little bit ahead, but both of those guys seem to be heavily targeted. Uh, and then you've got Rondale Moore as well. Are you going back to that well, though, after a one for 31 performance? I would. Uh, you because, would go back to Rondale? Yeah, to Rondale, because that was a. We've seen Rondale, what, four, essentially four games? Uh, let me pull up his box score here. So, so he came back in week four. It was absolute nothingness. Three for 11. Also in that game, A.J. Green was not playing. And they put Rondale Moore on the outside. The next two games, Rondale Moore gets to go be a primary slot wide receiver. Seven catches for 68, six for 49. Week seven, who's not playing? A.J. Green. They put Rondale back on the outside. Yeah, but A.J. Green was active, right? He was but just... he didn't get on the field. Exactly. I don't think he's getting on the field anymore. Right. Yeah, but, a... but they traded for Robbie Anderson. They traded for Robbie Anderson to replace right. A.J. Green. And I, I believe, and my projection is, Moving forward, you'll, the, the when you're in 11 personnel, it's going to be DeAndre and Robbie on the outside and Rondale on the slot. That's fair. That makes... so I, I think it bounces back. It, he's not like the the 7 for 68. Those numbers aren't incredible, but it's just it's a usable flex type of receiver. Okay, so we've we've named some guys that are really good. I would I would certainly take Wandale or or Pickens over my Gallup Dobbs, but they're unavailable. Yeah, let's get into the uh, nitty gritty here of your decisions. Marquise Goodwin. Okay. Can you chase with the injury to DK Metcalf? We know DK Metcalf you won't is catch gonna, him. is is that's, that's true. This is Olympic speed here. Um DK Metcalf is gone. Marquise Goodwin came in, had a bunch of air yards, deep targets from Geno, uh was running open, got four for sixty seven, two touchdowns. Is he because of that injury and being a little bit more involved, is he someone that you would start ahead of players? On a on a current you know weekly basis ahead of guys like Michael Gallup and Romeo Dobbs, I thought you were going to look at Mike on that one. Yeah, I no, <laughs> I w I I wouldn't. I get the I get the the reason for going after it. So we got Marquise Goodwin was a nineteen percent target share. 
that where Lockett had the thirty one percent. Lockett was you know good to Lockett's, go. Lockett still seems like he might be. He's still a little bit banged. Dealing up. with yes. the injury, but I guess with the other receivers, you know, Marquise Goodwin was clearly ahead of those guys. So, so Andy? maybe, may I'll, I'll give you a, I'll give you a maybe. I will give you a maybe. Oh, you guys <laughs> suck! I mean, it's it's really difficult to chase those performances because it's not like. You know, you could get four for 67 and a touchdown from Dobbs or two touchdowns from Dobbs. Uh, but, I mean, I was I was worried about Dobbs last week because uh, I don't remember what analogy I gave, but it was like you were handing – you're giving too much responsibility to him in this offense that he shouldn't have to bear, and these rookies don't perform over right. time. For Aaron Rod I mean, Sammy Watkins is back, right? Yep. Robert Tunyon has had an increased target share. You're going to throw the ball to Aaron Jones. Um, it's too, yes, I think I would take a shot on Goodwin over with no DK Metcalf over Dobbs. I will give you a formal response. Okay. Thank you. And I'm probably over Gallup until we get a good game from Gallup. Yeah. He needs to start trotting. Um, wait, I mean, Sammy Watkins, that's, that's an interesting name to at least mention that he was, he was back. He's on the field. If Alan Lazard can't go, I mean, you know, uh, we he's, saw Watkins in week two before the injury, three for 93. He's the only he's veteran. The, the de facto one, Randall Cobb's still out. Yeah, he's the only veteran that. No. <laughs> the that was Rogers the drop has. you got scared of. Oh, man, I I pooped. You were really afraid. If For those that don't know what we're talking about, in the middle of Sunday Live, Brooks hit an innocent old Lizard yeah. King drop. Yep. And Mike pooped a little. I did. I, I startled easy. And I was in the zone. I was given just you were hard hitting, incredible analysis, and then old clown face over here. Whoa! He's like, let's let's do some wacky drops. And I'm like Brooks. I'm trying. I'm doing real work this here. Is business. <laughs> I'm a professional. I also think you were still waking up, and so that was it. Was very early. It in was the it was like a, it was, a cup of coffee. Yeah, in your I face. give I give Brooks a lot of credit for pushing through with our brand. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Brooks. Yeah. I tried Th to thank, deny. Thank you, clown face. <laughs> Uh, we appreciate you. So, Don't Jason, know how to respond over here? Jason, give, <laughs> give us some other names uh, that you're considering. Okay, so other names that I am considering. Uh, Paris Campbell would have been in consideration. I am. I'm out personally. I, yeah, with I the, the quarterback. I don't want to chase Paris Campbell's two game with a quarterback change. Uh, Tyquan Thornton is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know he had a bad Whoa, game. Man. Yeah, because he's going to have a ton of bad games. He a ton, but he has. Huge upside. He no, he doesn't. Okay, Ooh, I fight, stand corrected. Why, he doesn't have upside. Jacoby Myers and Devontae Parker are much better. They don't even know who the quarterback is there. They have Hunter Henry. They have Ramondre to throw the ball to who had a ton of targets. When you have 4-2-8 speed and your second game is of your career, you're already the wide receiver 8 with multi He was touchdowns. a running back in that week. He can score any way he wants. Okay, pick up and play him. I dare you. I might. <laughs> I will I will choose for myself. Um, he plays yeah. the Jets this week on the road. Go uh, for it. Okay. With probably the third here's, string quarterback. Here's the other name that I think might actually be available in our our league, Elijah Moore. A yeah. player who I like. We've seen be good on the field. The squeakiest of wheels imaginable. And you lose Corey Davis, but you haven't seen – any wide receiver be good you ha the, with Zach Wilson, and you haven't seen Elijah Moore be good at all this entire year, which is why you find him on the waiver wire. It's against New England, so... Yeah, so, no thanks. Okay, it's, so you you would go I'm Gallup? Uh, yeah, over to Elijah Moore, I would. <laughs> yeah, I, I would here's go what I Here's Gallup what I've learned from this, this little waiver wire segment, and we're giving you all these names that are out there. I would make a trade, Jason. Yeah. I would try to fix your problem through a trade. Like with for who? <laughs> well, okay. Specifically. Christian Kirk? Okay. Get out of here. Right out. Get out of here. Okay, but let's, I, I let's would, talk. I would, I would suggest uh, you know, a matchup against Arizona Cardinals is pretty good. Adam Thielen might be on the block in our league. Okay. I, yeah. I know well. a guy. <laughs> league mates. <laughs> a symbol. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, when you look at uh, Jahan Dotson, will be coming back soon, but he re-aggravated his hamstring. So if you're more of a long-term depth add, Stash. I think Dotson fits that mold. Tyler Boyd, if he happened to be out there, 
the amount that they're throwing the football, you'd rather have Tyler Boyd the three over Drake London the one, over yes. Darnell Mooney the one, over, you know, you need the offense. Uh, I mean, over Garrett Wilson, over anybody that is on a low pass attempt uh, recipe, which seems to be working for teams this year, and it's depressing. All right, I have two names left at wide receiver. One is a kind of a stash alert. It's it's Josh Palmer. He's going into buy. He was in the concussion protocol, probably dropped everywhere. Um, with Mike Williams being out, are you willing to hold him through the buy? You know, hoping for a couple of big week opportunities. If if I'm I don't a little need disappointed in him. Y really? Yeah, I, I well I I understand the. I've, I've watched a lot of Chargers football. And while he has receptions, he doesn't have the kind of plays that I, I thought I'd see a step up in terms of kind of a go-to receiver mentality from him, and I haven't seen it. Okay, and the last name for a, a, a spot start would be Darius Slayton. I mean, it's, a, it's frightening. You can always get the big play, but without it, I think you're hurting. Yeah, that's true. Three for 58 last week with a 32-yard touchdown. If he doesn't have that one big play, you're probably like, like the week before where he's one for 18. I'm willing to go to the Palmer stash because of Mike Williams' absence. He has two games this year He could already. be the one. I mean, he could be the one coming out of it if Allen's not ready. Two games with a plus uh, with a 20-plus percent target share. Yeah, but give me his fantasy numbers. In those particular games, he was wide receiver 23. That's good. When he was uh, 6 for 99 and against Denver a couple weeks ago, 9 for 57, wide receiver 30. <laughs> Dude, I would take 9 for 57 yeah. over. Well, your, your bar is real low right now, Jason. Yeah. But I can't start Josh Palmer this I week because they're on by. I do think targeting Gerald Everett is a trade strategy. If you lost in Joku, if you're struggling at tight end, Everett is just necessary to this offense right now. We just talked about the hurting weapons. Yeah, again, on by, so yes. it'll be for uh, future weeks. Are you dropping uh, – here's some top drop candidates on oh. Twitter. <laughs> Michael Gallup. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we just we just saw from this segment that most of the names we talked about, I would not drop – the, the top-end names, the, the Wandale, the Pickens, um, those guys, absolutely, but the majority of these available names, I would stick with Gallup. Romeo Dobbs. And I'm not going to drop Dobbs either. I wouldn't either. Drake London. Oh, I'd man. Be more willing to drop Drake London. I don't think you need to. I also see Alec Pierce's name on this list. That's silly. I would, I'd wait, see how the quarterback. Let's dive into what out. running backs were welcoming into the fold. The big name. Beep, beep. Try that again, Mike. Yeah, come you, on, you man. Do, he, deserves, so, so he deserves a lot better than that. I, I like the juxtaposition of the very <laughs> high. No, that's, that's backing a backing up. up, man. He doesn't yeah. back it up. Oh, he backs it up. So he goes he can, forward. Yeah, well, where do, he got to start so like that's a slingshot. A, so you think the Gus bus? B oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the Gus bus can't go backwards, Jason. No. Well, I mean, but if it, it is going backwards, you're going to hear the, the you know. You yes. will hear the beat. Yeah. It's yeah. a big vehicle. Okay, Gus Edwards, 38% rostered. Which, if you were watching Sunday Live, you're part of that 38%. It would have gone up. Yeah, Mike has been kind of on fire on his uh, Sunday Live. Yes, be there. Uh, the more scared he gets, the better predictions he makes. <laughs> yeah, scare Don't the, put that on scare me. Scare him so uh, bad this week. Yeah, if he mentions McKissick, make sure Ooh, you got the button. Even if he doesn't. But that would be an illegal drop. Yeah, that would be illegal. Uh, 16 for 66, two touchdowns last week for the Gus bus. How much fab are you spending on Gus? Gus Edwards, is he the guy rest of season for the Baltimore Ravens? So the, the discussion on Gus Edwards is very interesting because running back eight, the production, like he came through 16 attempts, gets the two carries or gets the two touchdowns because they got a bunch of work inside the, the five there. But he only played on 36% of the snaps. He saw 48% of the running back attempts for the Baltimore Ravens. So you can look at it a couple ways. It's number one, those numbers, those peripherals are bad. Like if your player's only on the field for 36% of snaps, you can get game scripted out. He's not going to be a pass catcher. This is so not signing can, Kenneth Walker right. off the waiver wire. This yes. is, and, and re-injury could be a concern too. If you just, could. you just talked about the severity of his injury. We watched JK Dobbins go through it. But the so you can look at it and say the peripherals are terrible. I'm going to trade high, uh, Gus Edwards. I can probably get a decent return because he had an explosion. Or you say this is the first game back from a devastating injury, and Kenyon Drake sucked. 
Justice Hill is a fine running back, but he is they they have very different roles uh, on this offense. I lean the side. I mean, I'll get we'll get to you guys because I'm just confirming my priors of Gus Edwards. To me, was I'm putting him on my IR at the draft because Gus Edwards has been incredible throughout his career, and if so, it's like if you were in on what the potential of J.K. Dobbins was, I think that's the role that Gus Edwards will now be in, and he's got the frame and the athleticism to succeed. Yeah, for at least the next month, we know J.K. Dobbins, he was put on IR. He had a knee surgery, so he's gone for at least a month, probably longer than that, and then when he comes back, I don't anticipate that he becomes the starter uh, over Gus Edwards unless Gus Edwards suffers his own injury. This is a when, when we're on the IR, this is a technicality thing I don't recall. Does the bye week count when you're on the IR or is it four minimum missed games or is it missed weeks? I believe it's Kyle, weeks. Kyle, can you look but into that? Kyle, Kyle can vet that. I don't I, I th here's here's the thing with Gus Edwards. If he doesn't get a touchdown, you're probably going to be disappointed with his normal weekly performance. Let's say you pick him up and you're going to start him the rest of the year. I think you're going to have a baseline of about seven or eight fantasy points, and that's that's okay for a running back off the waiver. And then you're going to have the spike games where you get a touchdown, maybe two touchdowns, and he is a you know a top ten fantasy back. Those will be spattered about. That's what is going to happen the rest of the season. Now that's pretty valuable to me. Is that forty fab valuable? Um, yeah, that's that's forty fifty fab valuable. Okay. I I believe that over the next month he's going to be the dude. He could get better as the season goes on, but because he's not a pass catcher, you're going to have. But no one's really a pass catcher for the Ravens, right? Right. But that, so I mean, Kyle is saying IR players must now sit four games. Ooh. So because the, the bye week is in the middle of this stretch here for the Ravens, but four games that's. That's valuable information to know you have at least three games of Gus as the starter, potentially more. Now, Michael Carter, I know, has been dropped recently because of Brees' emergence. Um, I dropped him in a league uh, about a week and a half ago. So I think he's out there in a lot of active leagues. Is he higher or lower on your list than Gus Edwards after the James Robinson news? He's lower for me, but okay. would be the number two priority. And then what do you do with the Carolina backfield that was uh they were both very good. This is it's fifteen for one eighteen for Deonta Foreman, Chuba Hubbard nine for sixty three in the big touchdown. How do you manage a situation where both both players aren't as talented as others out there, but had a big week? You don't know how they did I mean, it almost feels like an upgraded Algier Caleb Huntley backfield mess yeah i mean that's basically what it is this is like a tyler algier type of situation except for you don't have an incumbent that is set to return like you have with cordero patterson this is a rest of season situation for right. foreman and chuba hubbard now the question is which one yep. chuba was the starter and chuba ran well ahead of deonta foreman until yep. the game got out of control and chuba got hurt and chuba got hurt so but that's the funniest part of this is like okay so chuba's the starter that's the one you go after no, he got he got his ankle hurt. Oh, it's no problem. I could have gone back in the game. They mm -hmm. said, but that happens all the time with ankle injuries, and then it swells up, and you miss a week, or or you're you're limited. So, I I I keep going back and forth as to who I would prefer. As of right now, I think I lean Chuba by the slightest margin. That makes it really hard if they're both out there to know what to spend. Like, are they 20 fab players? I, I think... It's a uh, decent starting point. Yeah, I mean, in, in my head, I, I see them as about a third of your budget. You have 33%, 35%, uh, pretty much for, for either. either of one? Yeah. That's tough, because you know Carolina is going to struggle. Be, be bad. Yeah, yeah they're going to struggle. It was a strange spike week for them, for the whole offense and the whole team. As Do you like them more than up. picking up Pacheco? I know they're on a bye. That is... I think I like Pacheco. Wow. <sighs> <laughs> maybe not I think I like Deonta Foreman a lot more than Chuba so I'd probably go Deonta Pacheco Chuba yeah I, I think I go Chuba Foreman Pacheco and, Great. and really that I mean there's three decent options to pick up there so maybe what you lower do, lower the fab and put it on all three exactly what I was gonna say I my order of those is with Jason of Chuba Foreman Pacheco um if you look at some other secondary options in the 40% rostered range, Tyler Algier and Latavius Murray. I prefer Murray uh, to Algier. Over. 
You get the same argument that Jason just made about Cordero coming back. Um, Latavius Which, is rest of season. And the Melvin Gordon thing is just – it's it's on a trajectory of – I just think him not being I, – I think the chance of Latavius kind of taking over that backfield has gone up. You don't have Mike Boone anymore. Mike Boone was uh, put on IR, so he is he's gone for at least a month. I think there's just a likability factor that is going to – to come into focus, you saw Latavius scored last week. Um, would you drop Melvin to pick up Latavius? No, no, no. I, I would. Uh, the, I, I would never drop Melvin Gordon right now. I, I, you have to have another wide receiver you could drop to add Well, sure. Latavius. I, the question was, would you, if that was your choice? If, I mean, obviously. Basically, who would I start if I had to start one of those guys? Like, who do I prefer of just yeah, those Yeah, I mean, let's guys? say it's Sunday morning and you have Latavius on the waiver wire and Melvin Gordon's in your roster. Would you pick up? Latavius and drop Melvin to to play him. I would I would put Melvin Gordon ahead of Latavius personally. Where do you land on that, Mike? I st you got a tie break. I still lean Melvin Gordon. He had more work. It, it, Latavius had the touchdown, but Melvin had the higher percentage of uh, of the running back attempts. And I feel I, like we should like these guys more than the Chuba Deonta Foreman. Uh, very possible. But the, people will chase Chuba. The, and the thing with Melvin. With Mike Boone being out, does the pass catching role shift? As I mean, it will get split between the two of them. But does it go heavier to Melvin Gordon? And I, it should. Think, yeah, I th yes. That's that's where we are. Is I think it should. So that's the that's the information I'm going to move forward with. Uh, Khalil Herbert, Rashad yeah. White, Khalil Herbert being available in half of leagues. He, I mean, he's a guy that you could pick up and maybe start going forward. Not this week against Dallas, but. He's one of the best, if not the best, stash in the entire league. Jalen Warren, Alexander Madison, Jermichael Hasty, Dearness Johnson. Those are some stashes. Jermichael Hasty is now the the man behind Travis Etienne. Those last two names are the ones I want to bring up because they're new. We we've been talking about Jalen Warren, Madison, Rashad White. All, you know, probably all of our listeners have picked them up in the leagues that they're in. But Jermichael Hasty becomes one of the newest insurance backs. We Andy's brought up Travis Etienne. He does not look like he's built for a bell cow roll. He's two fifteen, but he 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 certainly looks a lot smaller, thinner framed. So if he gets injured, all of a sudden, Jamichael Hasty, he's shown burst, and he is the clear backup ahead of Snoop Connor there. And then Dearness Johnson, he's the third string running back for the Cleveland Browns. This is what Chuba or what Deonta Foreman was a couple weeks ago when we were right. talking about. Look, there's trade rumors abound for Christian McCaffrey. Grab. Deonta Foreman now, this is Dearness Johnson because if Kareem Hunt gets traded or if Dearness Johnson gets traded at the trade deadline, he's there either way, he becomes a valuable fantasy asset. Follow up question on Kareem Hunt then. If they, if these rumors are abounding, are you going to pick him up? I mean, when you think of who was in the market for Christian McCaffrey, you know, the Rams were sitting there. Oh man. Kareem Hunt on the Rams would be great. I mean, if the Rams are going to keep up with San Francisco, I would not be shocked that they pull off a move like this. I agree. So do you take the chance? Because Kareem Hunt, like you said, that's a top 12 running back potentially. You, you definitely kick the tires because Kareem Hunt has been very uninvolved the last little bit. And I think that the fantasy managers might not be anticipating the trade. They're just going, yeah, he's he's maybe they're wanting to trade high because I think he got a touchdown this week with you, very no, limited no, opportunity. No, he got uh, seven points. Yeah, um, no. Yeah, six of them were from a touchdown. That's my point. Is so the fantasy <laughs> manager is saying, "Man, yes, I'm going to capitalize okay. on this on this touchdown because I wouldn't have been able to trade him for anything." Now you do, and if a trade happens, he's very valuable. Uh, drop check top drop candidates on Twitter. AJ Dillon. He is just an insurance running back at this point. So if you need to, yes. Kenyon Drake. Oh, uh, yeah. see you later. Punted. J.K. Dobbins. Yeah, With, he's without gone. an IR, you got to drop. Yep. Him. Melvin. We already talked uh, yeah, about it. All right, let's talk about tight ends we're welcoming into the fold. My favorite is yep. Greg Dulcich. Same. Just 15% rostered, nine targets, which is the same as Cortland Sutton for Denver. Jacksonville, the bye week in Tennessee. Are you in on Greg D? I am in on Greg D. I think the opportunity, the talent, everything is good. The flowing there. locks, the long socks, the short shorts, the <laughs> sandals. Yeah, oh, the whole the mustache. I'm definitely in on the dude. I mean, he is he's his own thing, man. That being said, he's probably not my number one. Really? He's probably my number three. So you're saying a rookie tight end. 
Mm -hmm. in his first two games Mm -hmm. of professional action, and he is averaging nearly 50 yards a game. He's been a top 12 tight end both of his appearances of his career. So his hit rate is currently 100% of Mm -hmm. the time that Greg D plays. He's a top 12 tight end, and you're putting him third. I'm putting him third. Here's why. Your first few words were a rookie tight end. And yes, he has been great for his two first performances. We have a lot of history on rookie tight ends. His snap percentage went way up again. Yeah. On rookie tight ends not being great. Also, you're talking about Brett Ripien here. They might trade Jude. They might trade Jerry Judy. Sure. I'm not anti Greg Dulcich. I'm saying why he's my number three is because it's. I, I don't think he's going to continue averaging over 50 receiving yards the rest of the year, so I feel like you're chasing a little bit. I like him. I'm picking him up. But to me, he's behind. If you've got a, an injury to David Njoku or a bye week going on, and I know we'll disagree on this name, Irv Smith Jr., well, this for week? a one-week yeah, rental. Baby. That's it. That's all I'm talking about. Not a rest of the season. If you need a rest of the season, it's clearly Dulcich ahead of Irv. But the Arizona Cardinals have been torched by every tight end they have faced. And, uh, you know, Irv Smith has been schemed for certain matchups. He's been in the passing game and then not in the passing game. If there's a matchup to scheme him in the passing game, it's against the Arizona Cardinals. And the other name that I just want to bring up, he's far more rostered. He's he's not, he's available in only half your leagues. But we talked last week about whether you chase Mike Gesicki or not. Yeah. I'm and in. he did not have a great game. That being said, he had seven targets and was super involved in routes run. He is talented. So what I saw last week says, yeah, I'm. it's ironic because he had three for 27. He had a yep. very bad game. But the, the metrics you look at behind the scenes were, were actually surprisingly good. So I uh, I would put him near the top of the list as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with Gesicki as well. The It does seem like they have made an about face from the beginning of the year where he was, he was not involved. He was being a blocker. They're getting him out there. They're letting him run. He has the athletic profile that you want in a tight end. He's also listed in some of these trade rumors. Uh, that either way, like Gesicki's, the role is increasing for him right now. If he gets traded, it's for a team that needs to use him. Other options, Evan Ingram was uh, four for 67 last week on seven targets, plays Denver. Uh, you could kick the tires with the Hayden Hurst experience again, who has been involved. You talk yeah. about high passing volume situation. Seems like he has a floor. Yeah, the, the last couple weeks, the Bengals have gone to a plus 20% of pass over expectation, as in the first month of the season, they were very neutral, just run heavy, but now they're they're opening it up again. Let's play a quick game. I'm going to go really fast. <laughs> and this is, would you drop Pitts and play? <laughs> would you drop Pitts and play Dulcich? Yes. Yeah. Would you drop Pitts and play Irv? No, I would play no. Irv over Pitts, but I wouldn't drop yeah, Pitts for it. Because it's would just you, the one week. Well, that's your choice. You're not going to probably roster two tight ends. Would you uh, drop Pitts and play Evan Ingram? Yeah. No. Would you drop him and play Gasicki? Yes. Yeah, yeah, probably. Would you seek counseling after you did any oh, of these? Oh, yes. I'm already in it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the last name, to, did we mention Harrison Bryant? We didn't, but that's a okay. good name, especially uh, even in Dynasty. He could be on waivers in Dynasty and now has an opportunity with the injuries. Uh, Cleveland Browns tight yes. end. All right, on the defensive side of things, best offense or best Ds that you can pick up and play. Uh, you could look at the Rams against San Francisco. It makes me a little nervous, to be honest with you. I love picking them up just because they were dropped on you know uh, because of their last matchups. They're available in fifty percent of leagues. The matchup isn't perfect, but they're one of the rare defenses that are great. I don't see them on this list that we've uh, written down, but I like Tennessee's defense a ton this week. What's the matchup? Uh, Houston. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and they fair. put up 17 fantasy points last week against the Colts. Uh, you also have the Dolphins against Detroit. Not you bad. have the uh, the Commanders against uh, Sam Ellinger. If you want to shoot your shot on a young, probably turnover-prone debut you could play it's, both sides of that game the commanders or the Colts yeah, you could. Are, are really great against each other with two backup quarterbacks going at it yeah apparently Heineke had I think five turnover worthy throws that the the Packers oh, just it, they did not capitalize this was he full, was doing the same this old was thing. Nick Foles magic I mean the, Heineke's one of his first throws of this game was like triple coverage Terry McLaurin it was just I'm gonna chuck it because what have I got to lose I mean yeah I was already benched. I think they had two defensive touchdowns the Green Bay Packers did that were called back on penalty. 
Yeah, so the I I prefer the Colts over the Manders. All right, and Jacksonville plays Denver and the Russell Wilson experience. If you want a shot at that, but Greg D obviously going to be a big impact player. Yeah, and play three, four, him. five touchdowns. You can see the waiver wire rankings, Jason, on the site. Yes, sir. You can go there. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, it's he's, under the regular said, rankings. I will pass the ball back yeah, to you, I mean, sir. I, uh, I'll see you, alley oop. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, the waiver wire rankings are available. So if you want to look at everybody we said and pull it up, you know, right, right there, have have the waiver wire rankings. <laughs> oh, there oh, it man. is. Very this is there. good. I should have taken the ball back. Very difficult uh, to say. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a really really valuable tool. I've been using it. People have been uh, saying it makes their waivers much easier to just look at the list of everybody we've been talking about. You ever seen a play where like Jason Kidd like threw up an alley oop? And then the guy was like, he grabbed it at the top of the rim and he threw it right back to Jason Kidd. <laughs> I have you ever not. seen that before? No. We just, we just I mean, I, now. No, now my I'm favorite out. is jump up, grab the ball, but come down with it. Three dribbles, take that assist away, dunk. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. This get, is a self get stat, the stealer. Yeah. stat stealer. Stat <laughs> stealer. Uh, all right, that was Welcome to the Fold, presented by our friends at Samsung Galaxy with the Galaxy Z Fold 4. You can unfold an immersive screen. You can watch games in full detail, maximize your viewing experience on the go, get those fantasy rosters up on the screen yeah. next to, you know, yeah. the game scores. Have your waiver wire on one side. Have your Rick D's picture on the other side. Rick D's right. picture or your fantasy app either way. <laughs> uh, visit Samsung.com to learn more. Full stream ahead. Well, it's a tough week if you have uh, Justin Herbert as your starter or Patrick Mahomes as your starter. You're looking at the streaming quarterback options. Hopefully, you did a little planning ahead. Um, I made a trade. That's another option for you. You don't have to sign an option that you don't like. You can you know, try to work on a trade for somebody that you do like. I love Tua going up against the Detroit Lions. Uh, we'll call it a defense. This week, I made a, a, a trade. Uh, moving another streaming option I like this week, not as much. I, I don't mind Jimmy G with the Christian McCaffrey experience. It's funny because Jimmy Garoppolo, you're 100% looking for cheap points. I am not expecting Jimmy Garoppolo to do something special on his own. I never does. live in this world where it's like, you dump it to McCaffrey, you get the points. You dump it to Debo, you get the points. You dump it to Kittle, you get the points. Yep. It's just... You benefit. So Jimmy G was my streamer. He's uh, not rostered in a lot of leagues. So if you if you're looking for him, I traded him and a late round pick in one league to get Tua against Detroit because I like that a little bit more with the Tyreek Hill experience. Jimmy Garoppolo has three back to back to back weeks of being a top ten fantasy quarterback, but he has not been in the top eight ever. Ooh. That's what you get. I yeah. mean, that's that's quarterback just nine, quarterback nine, quarterback nine. That's that's fine from a streamer. Survive your week. Yeah, don't look at that upside down. Am I right? Uh, my streaming option this week is widely available because we don't know if he's the starter. <laughs> it's Jameis <laughs> Winston, and you could throw Andy Dalton in here. You yes, know, just you can. just call it the uh, uh, the New Orleans Saints quarterback is who I am starting. Taking um, a feather out of the cap of uh, Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Who started Davis Mills last week because of the matchup against the Las Vegas Raiders? He oh, threw for th hand him the hand him the, uh, the underpants. <laughs> oh no, you know I don't think a, a Vegas uh, uh, against Vegas going with the Saints quarterback. I don't think that's stealing. You don't need steel underpants nah. for that. Nah, I mean you're a good, good a good uh, wicking material. Yeah, something I'd put keep him you on. Fresh. You might get a little sweaty. Well, certainly, if you got steel underpants on, I'd be super. <laughs> the steel sweating. underpants is more to protect your your loins and hold in the poo. Yeah, um, so but no one knows. I, I do, really? I, oh yeah, yeah. The the Raiders are no one knows the thirty second best team in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. They there's no chance that the Saints do not throw for a bunch of yards and a couple touchdowns in this Agreed. game. So whoever the Saints quarterback is right now, if I'm picking one up, I'm picking up Jameis. You better hope it's not both of them. I yeah certainly don't. I hope it's not both of them. And I'm going with Daniel Jones against Seattle. It's the 26th best matchup if you adjust for points. He has the second most rushing quarterback yards, and he's averaged a robust 8.3 rushing yards per attempt. Daniel Jones been running a ton, low key usable for fantasy football here, and he he also has some other pretty good matchups 
coming up uh, down the streak that I mentioned for Wandale. Um, yeah, he was he was in the consideration as well, looking for that Herbert pivot. You're hoping he runs the football. I mean, uh, he's good at it. Yeah, what, well, 100 yards last week? Most of the season he's been, you know, in the teens or 20s for quarterback finish, but you saw it last week. He was the quarterback three. He, he can absolutely have big performance. And I looked at Kirk Cousins as an option in a trade going up against Arizona, and I didn't like it. Oh, really? I just didn't. Cousins has done – he's just been – the team has been good, but I think he's like 20 fantasy points every game. Like, he has not had a big blow-up game, a, one of those explosive ones – so I wasn't sure if it would happen against Arizona, and I got a little nervous. I'd I'd be happy to play him. All right, tomorrow we have Ride or Die, the Thursday night football preview, and a special segment. Ooh. Second half sleepers on the show mm. tomorrow. Check out the community at jointhefoot.com. Support the show. Join uh, thousands of like-minded fantasy players. It's a good time. See you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.